I'm here with Mark Nelson, and today we've been talking about crystals. And you may not realize it, but crystals have, metal has crystals in the molecular structure. And exactly. Mark, you're going to tell us about that. Exactly. It's All really right. great. Because the metal is made up of, uh, of crystals, mm -hmm. and they have grain boundaries. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's say if you want to make a bracelet, mm -hmm. um, and you start off with a piece of sheet metal, it's going to be very stiff. Okay. And so you won't be able to form it much. Right. So you need to soften it up and break those boundaries between the crystals and this in the structure. Exactly. And what we're going to do is actually uh, anneal it, is it called the process. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if I can show you on the chart here, mm -hmm. um, when you start off with a, a piece of soft metal, the uh, crystals are large, okay, with few few grain boundaries. Mm -hmm. Okay. But when you when you hit it with a hammer and you work harden it, those get crushed and smaller. And we talk about work hardening a lot, but exactly. I think we probably don't spend as much time talking about annealing. So it's good to know both ends of the spectrum. You should know both ends mm -hmm. of the spectrum. Um, so because if you want to do more working with the metal, you mm -hmm. have to soften it and keep on going. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do that. All right. Uh, what I have here is a piece of uh, bracelet blank, mm -hmm. and I need to coat it with a barrier flux to keep it from oxidizing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a flux that's going to protect mm -hmm. the metal from getting black, and you just cover the whole thing, front and back, and you can do this with copper, brass, nickel. And All you could use any width of sheet, right? Depending any width? on what you want your bracelet to sure, look like. Sure. And I need to put safety glasses on because I'm going to light my torch here. All right, safety first. Now, the key thing is that we need to heat this metal for a brief amount of time mm -hmm. um, at 1100 degrees. And that's going to anneal it. That'll make it the, uh, the crystals grow mm -hmm. and get softer. Okay. So, one of the ways I'm going to judge the temperature is use a different flux, um, just a blob here. And that will, t when this gets clear, Mm -hmm. It'll tell me that um, it's the right temperature. So that's kind of like your oven thermometer. Exactly. The other way we have to tell is, um, is if it gets a uh, dull red in color. The but metal? The, yeah, when it gets a dull red. But mm -hmm. the problem with that is, you know, when you're working in your studio, you might have a lot of light. Oh, so the color may not be totally apparent. Exactly. So a dull red might actually be 12, 1300 degrees, which okay. is going to be too much. And what is your work surface there? It looks like you're working on a block. Working on a block is a heat reflective block, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not absorbing any kind of heat, so the heat goes right back in the metal. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, that flux is starting to turn clear, right? Mm -hmm. So once it turns clear, you want to hold that temperature for a little bit, you know, maybe 30 seconds, almost a minute, mm -hmm. giving those uh, crystals time to grow, mm -hmm. okay? Now, is that flux going to disappear then? You betcha. Um, what you want to do is go ahead and before it cools too much, quench it in water. Now this is going to make a little sound. Oh wow. Okay. And you can see um, all the flux and oxidation on mm -hmm. there. And what we'll do is we'll put this in the pickle. Oh okay. And, and that's this is our mild, take care of it. yeah, this is our mild acid solution. Mm -hmm. And um, if they don't fit, you do like half and then turn it over. Mm -hmm. Like your turkey. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, um, so we'll let that sit and let, let that pickle clean all that stuff off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now what we're going to do, is we'll come back to a piece that's here that's been softened and annealed. Mm -hmm. Now go ahead and start bending, bending that. Okay. Oh wow, so you can bend it with your hands. Exactly. Now, it, and it would be this soft until you harden it, until right? Until we start mashing those crystals. Because you've changed it at the base of its structure. Exactly. Right. So I'm going to get my bracelet mandrel out, and um, can you hand me that dead blow hammer over there? Yes. That has nylon ends. That's right, and it's um, got sand in there. Oh. So it makes it really nice. and. Um, the nice thing about annealing is you can actually start doing this by just wrapping it with your fingers. So you're using some muscle there? Not hardly. Not really? Yeah, okay. it's very soft. Mm -hmm. um, now, depending on your metal, you know, if this was brass or nickel, mm -hmm. um, it would be much harder to do. Now, could you soften it too much? Um, not really. I mean, because it's only going to go to a certain amount of um, uh, softness before mm -hmm. it melts. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's kind of a set limit there. So then you just use your hammer to refine the size. Exactly. You're going to, um, I guess, zhuzh it. And, uh, <laughs> is that a technical term? It is now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you just keep forming it until you get to the bracelet that you want. Mm -hmm. And let's say you can start bending it by hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now if this gets really hard, I can't move it anymore, mm -hmm. you go back and repeat the process. Oh, so you could actually soften and anneal it again. Mm -hmm. You can and do this hundreds of times. keep working it. Hundreds of times. And uh, that's how people just keep working it. And um, mm -hmm. bracelets are odd because they have to be an oval. Mm -hmm. And so what you want to do is kind of use the side of the mandrel. Keep working that, that shape. Exactly. 
until it's just right for your wrist or your, mm -hmm. your customer's wrist. So is this something that you could do with a finished bracelet? If you had a finished bracelet that came out of shape or something, could you go back and sort of fix it? Depends. Um, you certainly could if there's no stones in there mm -hmm. or anything that cannot take the heat. Okay, so it would have to all be metal. It'll all be metal, straight mm -hmm. metal. Mm -hmm. And then you can certainly go back and re anneal it, mm -hmm. reshape it. Mm -hmm. And because um, as you work hardening it, as mm -hmm. you're working it, you're hardening it. Right. So you uh, have to anneal it first. Now, what about the edges? The edges, it, you know, just like you're going to make a bracelet, mm -hmm. you can file them, mm -hmm. sand them, treat mm -hmm. this however you want to, mm -hmm. sand it. Um, there's just the okay. Well, let's take a look at your finished bracelets because you have some beautiful samples here. And these are all using that same basic forming technique. Forming technique and annealing. Annealing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this one is, of course, amazing. Thank you. Has your crystals on the front there. And it looks like you just used a couple of different techniques. I did had to do some different things, mm -hmm. like make folds versus mm -hmm. to accommodate the crystals. Mm -hmm. Well, that is just a beautiful way to bring the crystals and the metal together. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. And thank you again for watching. Please join us next time as we explore lots of different elements and will feature sure. And don't forget to visit the website to let us know your ideas for future episodes. We'll see you soon.